Hi everyone, welcome back to World Reads. My name is Dave. Today is the next instalment in my six book series. So this is six books to look out for in February. Roll the titles. Hi everyone, welcome back. As I said in the introduction, I'm gonna be highlighting here six new books that you really should be on the lookout in the month of February. Let's crack on, shall we? Let's get on with some books. So the first book we have is a new book, a new novel by Julian Barnes. And Julian Barnes is, as I'm sure you're well aware, one of the heavyweights of English literature. I've mentioned this on my channel before, but I have struggled in the past with a few novels of Julian Barnes. Some of them I've really enjoyed. I enjoyed, um, let's have a look what I've read here. I'm just checking my Goodreads list. So uh, Metroland I really liked. Uh, Flaubert's Parrot I really liked. Pulse, uh, the collection of short stories I really liked. But um, The Noise of Time, I really, really struggled with that book and I didn't think it lived up to the hype. I didn't think it lived up with the blurb. But Julian Barnes is back with a brand new book and it's called The Only Story. This is published on the 1st of February by Jonathan Cape and this sounds like it could be right up my alley. The blurb says, would you rather love the more and suffer the more or love the less and suffer the less? That is, I think, finally, the only real question. First love has lifelong consequences, but Paul doesn't know anything about that at 19. At 19, he's proud of the fact his relationship flies in the face of social convention. As he grows older, the demands placed on Paul by love become far greater than he could possibly have foreseen. Tender and wise, the only story is a deeply moving novel by one of fiction's Greatest Mappers of the Human Heart. That's uh, The Only Story by Julian Barnes. It looks fantastic. Uh, that's published on, by Jonathan Cape and he's out on the 1st of February. This is, uh, this has got a, we wait to see this cover. Uh, th this is The Holder by Jess Kidd and this is published by Canongate and is out on the 1st of Feb. Maud Drennan, underpaid carer and unintentional psychic is the latest in a long line of dog's bodies for the ancient, belligerent Cathal Flood. Yet despite her best efforts, Maud is drawn into the mysteries concealed in his filthy, once grand home. She realises that something is changing. Cathal and the junk-filled rooms are opening up to her. With only her agoraphobic landlady and a troop of sarcastic, ghostly saints to help, Maud must uncover what lies beneath Cathal's decades-old hostility and the strange activities of the house itself. And if someone has hidden a secret there, how far will they go to ensure it remains buried? So that's Jess Kidd. It's called The Holder, and it's published by Canongate, and it's out on the 8th of February. Another book out on the 1st of February is Zoe Gilbert. This one's called Folk. This is published by Bloomsbury. The blurb says a captivating magical and haunting debut novel of breathtaking imagination from the winner of the 2014 costa short story award the remote island village of neverness is a world far from our time and our place the air hangs rich with the coconut scent of gorse and the salty bite of the sea harsh winds scour the rocky coastline the village's lives are inseparable from nature and its enhancements Verlin Webb, born with a wing for an arm, unfurls his feathers in defiance of past shame. Plum is snatched by a winter ball and dragged to his lair. Little Crab Scary takes his first run through the gorse maze. Madden sleepwalks through violent storms haunted by horses and her father's wishes. As the tales of this island community interweave over the course of a generation, their earthly desires, resentments, idle gossip and painful losses create a staggeringly original world. Crackling with echoes of ancient folklore, but entirely wonderfully her own, Zoe Gilbert's folk is a dark, beautiful and intoxicating debut. This looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, so that's Zoe Gilbert, folk published by Bloomsbury and out on the 1st of February. The next book is one that I've been following the progress of this book on Twitter and I've been waiting for it for quite a while. So this is Alicia Drake, and the book's called I Love You Too Much, and it's published by Picador. 
and it's out on the 8th of February. And the blurb says, I knew I was in Paris. I knew that was the Seine beneath me, the sky above. But when I looked around for help, the grand apartment buildings of the Quai Voltaire stared back at me. Indifferent. In the sixth arrondissement, everything is perfect and everyone is lovely. This is the Paris of 13-year-old Paul, shy and unloved. He quietly observes the lives of the self-involved grown-ups around him. His glamorous Mamam Severine, her young musician lover Gabriel, and his fitness-obsessed Papa Philippe. Always overlooked, it's only a matter of time before Paul sees something that he's not supposed to see. Seeking solace in his unlikely friendship with tearaway classmate Scarlet and the sweet confections from the elegant neighbourhood patisseries, Paul yearns for unconditional love. But what will he do if he can't find it? Alicia Drake evokes contemporary Parisian life with the subtlety of a later day Francois Sagan. And she captures in Paul the pains of adolescence as poignantly as Salinger's Holden Caulfield. I Love You Too Much is a novel of extraordinarily intelligence and heart, a devastating coming of age story told from the sidelines of Parisian perfection. So that's Alicia Drake with I Love You Too Much, published by Picador and out on the 8th of February. The next one is uh, a book by Jim Crace. This is The Melody, also published by Picador and also out on the 8th of February. Alfred Boozy, famed in his town for his music and songs, is mourning the recent death of his wife and quietly living out his days in the large villa he has always called home. Then one night, Boozy is attacked by a creature he disturbs as it raids the contents of his larder. Boosie is convinced that what assaulted him was no animal, but a child, innocent and wild. And his words fan the flames of old rumour of an ancient race of people living in the bosque surrounding the town. And new controversy, the town's paupers, the feral wastrels at its edges must be dealt with once and for all. Lyrical and warm, intimate and epic, the melody by Jim Crace tracks the few days that will see Boosie and the town he loves altered irrevocably. This is a story about grief and ageing, about reputation and the loss of it, about love and music and the peculiar way myth seeps into real life. It is a political novel too, a rallying cry to protect those we persecute. So that's Jim Crace, it looks fantastic. The Melody, published by Picador and out on the 8th of February. There's a couple more here that just deserve uh, highlighting for you. So the first one is Hidden Lives. This is by Judith Lennox and it's published by Headline Review and it's out on the 22nd of February. Hidden Lives is the latest mesmerising tale of drama and intrigue from Judith Lennox. Sure to appeal to readers of Kate Moulton and Rachel Hoare, a surprise inheritance reveals the hidden lives of two sisters torn apart by tragedy. Following her grandmother's death, Rose Martineau inherits the egg, an extraordinary house nestling in the Sussex countryside. She discovers that the mysterious house originally belonged to her grandmother's younger sister, Sadie, who Rose never knew existed. In her search to uncover why the sisters grew apart, Rose is drawn back into the glamorous and decadent world of the 1930s. Meanwhile, Rose's own life as a dutiful wife and mother is turned upside down by a sordid scandal that threatens to destroy her marriage. It is only once she has unraveled the secrets of Sadie's past that she is able to look to her own future. An epic tale of secrets, scandal, jealousy and passion spanning the 20th century. You will see from that why I couldn't really leave that book out because it was just too good. So that was Hidden Lives. Uh, by Judith Lennox and published by Headline Review and out on the 22nd of February. Now, my last book, this is uh, All the Perverse Angels. Anna, an art curator, leaves a psychiatric hospital and finds herself in an English village, sharing a rented cottage with her partner. Seeking refuge from the aftermath of past infidelities, she constructs a personal reality from the brushstrokes and histories of her favourite artworks. A chance discovery in the cottage's attic leads Anna on a journey back to the late 19th century and the complicated relationships of two women studying at Oxford University. As Anna's investigations blend with the student's story and the threads of her life intertwine with those of a century earlier, 
she finds a way to run even farther from her pain. But the past is not all it seems, and Anna's escape routes are taken from her one by one until she must face the truth of her present. All the Perverse Angels is a breathtaking novel about the nature of loss and the confusion of love, about the stories we are told and the stories we tell ourselves. Again, that seems utterly, utterly brilliant. Um, that All the Perverse Angels by Sarah Kmar, published by Unbound and out on the 22nd of February. Oh, that is it. That is the end. That is all the books I've got for you. All the books you've seen today, you can find these and further details on them and links to buy them in the show notes in the description box below this video. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you find something of interest to you there. I might be back because I do realise that all those books were hardback. So I might be back before the end of the month with a paperback version, um, just highlighting some paperbacks that I'm looking forward to being published in February. And I hope you will too. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back on Wednesday with, I think, the second part of my January book haul. So until I see you again, whatever you're doing this week, enjoy your books. And I will see you back here on Wednesday evening for another booktube video. Until then, take care, bye bye.